Hello, I hope you guys are having a good week. We are going to be doing the book of Judges in Come Follow Me this week. So I thought I would share the story about Gideon. Because of disobedience, the armies of Israel were gradually weakened. Remember, they have come to conquer Canaan, but they haven't always been obedient. They could not defend the people against their enemies. And as a result, the Israelites lived in fear and poverty because of the continual destruction by invading armies. So this is the years passing after Joshua has died and the Israelites have fallen away from keeping their promises. The people that lived in the land from before have come along and are attacking them and causing them all kinds of grief. The Israelites planted crops, and when the crops were just beginning to grow, huge armies of Midianites rushed down into the valley and destroyed everything in their path, including the crops and animals. These attacks left the Israelites with no food and became so terrible that the Israelites had to flee from their homes and hide in mountain caves in order to save their lives. This continued for seven years until finally the Israelites began to repent and turn to God for help. In answer to their prayers, the Lord sent the Israelites a prophet. He told them that all their problems were caused by their disobedience to Heavenly Father's commandments. They had forgotten the true God, and they had begun to worship idols and do many things that were evil. The prophet told them that if they were obedient, they would not have to fear their enemies. Among the Israelites was a young man named Gideon. One day when he was threshing wheat for his family, an angel of the Lord came and sat under a nearby oak tree. The angel spoke to Gideon, saying, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon had wondered about the terrible suffering of his people. He asked, If the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of? The Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the word of the Lord came to Gideon, Go in thy strength, and thou shalt save Israel from the Midianites. Gideon wondered how he could save his people from their cruel enemies. But the Lord reassured him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites. Gideon was still not convinced, and he was thinking, I'm just an ordinary guy. So he asked the Lord for a sign that he might know that God would be with him. Gideon went into his house to prepare an offering to the Lord and brought out goat meat and unleavened cakes. The angel again appeared and told him to place the food on a rock. Gideon did as he was instructed. The angel then stretched forth his staff and touched the food. Immediately, a flame of fire came out of the rock and consumed the meat and cakes. This was the sign Gideon had asked for. He looked around, but the angel was gone. He now knew that he had a special mission to perform. He was to save the Israelites from their enemies. That very night, the Lord instructed Gideon to destroy the altar of the idol Baal, where Gideon's own father, Joash, worshipped. He was also to cut down the grove of trees next to the altar. The Lord further told Gideon to build an altar to the Lord and to offer as a sacrifice the younger of two bullocks owned by Gideon's father. This command worried Gideon. He knew that destroying the altar where the people of the city worshipped their idols would cause trouble. Because he feared his father and the men of the city, Gideon hesitated to obey. 
But finally, he took 10 of his servants and during the darkness of night, destroyed the altar where Baal was worshipped. I remember Gideon's own father worshipped Baal at this altar. The next morning, when the men of the city saw the altar of Baal broken and the grove of trees cut down, they were angry. When they learned Gideon was responsible, they went to his father's house and demanded, bring out thy son so that he may die because he hath cast down the altar of Baal and because he hath cut down the grove that was by it. Even though he owned the altar, Joash defended his son. He said, if Baal be a god, let him punish the one who broke down his altar. Soon thereafter, the Israelites received word that a huge army of their enemies was preparing to attack them. The spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. He blew his trumpet to call all the men to prepare for war. He sent messengers to nearby cities and towns to ask for men to come and fight. Almost 32,000 men came, but even with that many men, Gideon was worried. He knew that the enemy had even more soldiers. It was hard for him to understand how his army could save Israel when they were smaller in number than the enemy. He wondered, too, if he was really doing the will of the Lord. Gideon needed to be sure. So he asked the Lord to give him a sign or a promise that the Israelites would win. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said, he prayed, behold, I will put a piece of wool on the ground. And in the morning, if the dew is on the wool only, and it is dry on the ground all around, then I shall know that thou wilt save Israel by my hand, as thou hast said. The next morning, Gideon arose early and found that the wool was wet and the ground was dry, just like he had asked. But Gideon needed to be absolutely sure, so he prayed again, saying, let not thine anger be hot against me. Let it now be dry only upon the wool and upon all the ground, let there be dew. So he wanted to make sure it wasn't just a fluke. It was really the Lord letting him know that he was going to be with him. The following morning, Gideon again found his prayer had been answered. The wool was dry while the ground was wet with dew. Gideon now was sure that the Israelites would be victorious. Knowing that the Lord was with him, he was ready for battle. Then the Lord surprised Gideon by saying, the people that are with thee are too many. If Israel wins with so many men, they will boast of their own strength, saying, my own hand hath saved me. The Lord told Gideon to go among the people and say, whoever is fearful and afraid, return home. 22,000 men returned to their homes leaving Gideon with only 10,000 men. Two thirds of his army left because they were afraid. Then the Lord spoke again to Gideon saying, the people are yet too many, bring them down to the water. Gideon brought his 10,000 men down to the water and the Lord said to him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps and those who kneel down to drink. So if you lap the water like a dog, you put your head down and <laughs> versus the man who put their hand in the water and cupped it and drank that way so that they could keep their heads up and be looking around. Separate those two types of men. 300 men drank the water by putting their hand to their mouth and drinking the water. All the rest bowed down on their knees to drink. 
The Lord said to Gideon, by the 300 men that left, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand and let all the men, every man go to his place. Gideon's army now numbered only 300 men, while the enemy numbered 135,000 men. Wow, that's a big difference between the size of the two armies. So do you think that the people of Gideon are going to say that, oh, because I was so strong, I defeated the armies of the Midianites? Mm -mm, not now. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon, Arise, get thee down to the enemy, for I have delivered them into thy hand. Take thy servant, Pura, and thou shalt hear what the Midianites are saying, and afterward thine hands shall be strengthened for the battle. When Gideon and Pura neared the camp of the enemy, they saw thousands and thousands of tents and camels. Again, Gideon wondered how his small group of men could defeat this huge army. When they neared one of the tents, Gideon and Pura heard a man telling his friend about a dream. Behold, I dreamed, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian, and it came into the tent and struck it, and the tent fell and overturned and the tent lay upon the ground. The friend interpreted the dream saying, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for God is giving him a victory over Midian. And when Gideon heard this, he thanked God and quickly returned to his small army of men and commanded, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into our hands the Midianites. Gideon organized the men into three groups and gave each man a trumpet and also a pitcher with a torch inside, kind of like a covered lantern. He told his men, watch me and do whatever I do. When I and those that are with me blow on our trumpets, you are to blow your trumpets also on every side of the camp and call out the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Under cover of night, Gideon and his men surrounded the Midianite camp. Gideon blew his trumpet and broke his pitcher so that the torch could be seen. Immediately, his 300 soldiers blew their trumpets and broke open their pictures, shouting, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The Midianites awoke from their sleep in a panic. They had been sleeping. They groped through the darkness, not knowing who were their friends or enemies. And they began to fight amongst themselves. In the confusion, they fled. Other Israelites joined the 300 men pursuing the enemy to the borders of the land where a great battle took place. When it was over, 120,000 Midianites had lost their lives. With the Lord's help, Gideon's forces had won a great victory over a large and cruel enemy. The Israelites rejoiced. They honored Gideon as their leader and said to him, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy son, and thy son's son also. For thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon replied, I will not rule over you. Neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. So Gideon was a little nervous at first and asked for reassurance from the Lord that he would really be with them and help him. And then when he was confident, he led the Israelites, and under the direction of the Lord, they were victorious. And the Lord can fight our battles for us. If we do what the Lord wants us to do, we can be blessed and overcome things that might seem insurmountable. 
so hard to do that we don't think we can do it. But if we will trust the Lord and do what he asks us to do, then we can also be victorious in our challenges. Remember, Grandma loves you.